Good evening, everybody. Dr. Glow here with Black Girl Everything. And I have the beautiful one. Was it, is it one Netta? One Netta, yeah. Ah, see, <laughs> you did it. <laughs> I got it right on the first try. I hate messing up people's names. Like I do. Yeah, it's like such a sucky thing. So as we've been sitting here, sorry, everybody who's been waiting for all the 14 and a half minutes. I had such Wi-Fi issues today. It's been really interesting. But we're finally here. And look at this one. I'm totally jealous of this background, which is actually real life people. <laughs> so you're in Tampa, you say, right? I am in Tampa. That is it like dope. Is, it, it feels pretty good. I like it. It's not cold in New York <laughs> right now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't be, I can't sit outside of my background, my backyard in the wind at this particular moment. I'm going to need a hat, maybe a scarf. <laughs> it's a little chilly back there today. I believe it. So tell everybody a little bit about your business. I'm so excited to talk about this. First, I want to announce that you are definitely a sponsor for the Black Girl Everything Retreat. <laughs> Very excited to have you. Thank you for your sponsorship, helping out with that event because it's really important to me. I love the retreat itself. So, that was amazing. <laughs> I do. And like you're fancy because you're one of the people that's helping pay for it. <laughs> She's like, just keep it real. Just keep it real. I mean, <laughs> no, like, that literally. is definitely amazing. I'm um super excited. I'm definitely, I know initially when I had said, hey, can I be a sponsor? I know I wasn't possibly going to be able to come, um, but things have changed and maneuvered. So I think I'm definitely going to be able to come. I just have to make sure I can get the, the time and make sure I can organize everything, but it's looking pretty good um, to be able to actually physically be there. So I'm excited about that as well. You should be very excited because it is like a <laughs> yes. three-day weekend of fabulosity. Yes. I am super excited for that. But we're excited to definitely have you there. So tell everybody, what's the name of your business? Yes. So the name of my business is Queen Lexi's Home Collection and More. Um, it's definitely evolved because originally it was called Queen Lexi, the original collection. Um, and that was because I was just solely just doing um, my works of art. Mm -hmm. So um, I started off in the beginning of like the pandemic going crazy because I needed an outlet and I started painting. Um, believe it or not, it was really this um, puff and sip or puff and paint. There we go. It was a puff and paint that I went to. And I realized that I really enjoyed the painting that we were doing. And I was like, oh, I need to go buy some more paints. So let me do this a little bit more. And then I just started getting into that creator mode and creating. And then people started asking for it. And they're like, hey, okay. I want this. I want to buy this. And then I'm like, oh, word, y'all want this? Like, you actually yeah. like this? I can make money off of it? Okay. Mm -hmm. um, and then I actually went on to kind of do more with that collection, which was the original okay. collection. Um, and then eventually, as time went on, I'm like, okay, well, I, I need some new content, like, Everybody done bought everything and it was well received. So I'm like, okay, let's kick it up a notch. And that's when I actually ended up um, with Queen Lexi's Home Collection and more where I actually had my first art show. Um, my art show was on Juneteenth last year. It okay. was a beautiful, um, beautiful thing because it wasn't just about me. Um, it was really about women in mental health um, as well as just mental health in the black community overall. So okay. I had a few spoken word artists there. I had um, a mental health professional come and actually speak. And then I had a song mm -hmm. performer as, there as well, as well as displaying my art as a whole. And from that art collection, um, that then opened my eyes to Queen Lexi's home collection and more. And that's how everything ended up on like home decor items such as like the pillows and the comforters and then yeah. the fashion collection with the totes and then the journals um and it's just been a really dope experience just watching the evolution of it and it's continuing to change okay I can definitely say that okay that's definitely dope so uh, I've been able to actually see a lot of your work because I just saw you at uh, Yele's last event, which was really exciting to meet you in person, right? To see yes. your stuff, your stuff is such great quality. So what is usually your usual inspiration behind your art that you use for your products? My life. I think mm -hmm. it really, um, it goes a lot off of my mood. So as I mentioned, like mental health has been a big thing for me. My okay. journey towards um, being in a better mental space, being healthier mentally, 
um, yeah. and just kind of, it's a form of expression. So a lot of like what I was feeling and things that may have been top of mind or just the colors, even in the patterns that end up coming out is really just from whatever is in here. Got it. Um, and it just goes from there. I think I do take a lot of inspiration as well. Just looking at other artists, because I love abstract art. Um, okay. That's more so my niche. And mm -hmm. just playing with that abstract art. And then now I'm actually getting into more digital and liking to play with the digital side of it, because I'm very okay. technical mm -hmm. as well. Um, and yeah. Okay, dope. So are you currently collaborating with other artists as part of your collection as well? Or is it just really just the stuff that you're creating? So right now, I'll be honest, I've actually taken a bit of a hiatus. So a lot of people haven't seen any new works. Um, I've really just taking a pause and taking that break to actually be one with myself and um, be in a better mental space. Um, okay. It's been a lot going on and happening. So I have not been able to collaborate. Um, one of the last collaborations I did actually is with one of my best friends. He's a song artist, was actually mm -hmm. one of the performers at my art show. Um, he's going into the NFT space and he was looking mm -hmm. for artists to commission work from for his album cover. So yeah. that was like one of the last um, collabs that I did before deciding to take this bit of a hiatus um, from okay. the business for the now so that I can like recollect and figure out what the next steps are. Yeah. So where do you see yourself going with it at this point as you've been taking this moment to think through your process? I think I am trying to figure out um, where the focus should be because I offer so much and there's so mm. much on the site. There's so many different yeah. products. So it's just hard to try to figure out, like follow the trends. I've with taking the hiatus, I took the hiatus from social media. So now I have to relearn what's going on, what people like, what they don't like, figure out these algorithms. How do I market properly? Um, so I'm kind of now starting to step back into that space of trying to figure out, okay, well, how do I market what I do? How do I um, refine it so that I'm attracting a different demographic in the, the target demographic that I like? Um, yeah. And just doing a lot of research type work at this point. Okay. No, I understand because, you know, the thing about with social media is shifts so often and the algorithm is, is crazy because, you know, a lot of times I meet people like, oh, I know you because they know this logo. They see this, right? So it's making it across mm -hmm. timelines all the time. I'm like, oh, really? You know, this, you, know this, you know my logo, but you have no clue about what I am or who, what I do because sometimes we just glance over certain things. So I think there's a, a level of importance there. But what I hear from you is that you feel as if um, you have too much going on with your site? I think so. I think I want to do too much at once um, okay. because I'm also um, throwing events. So I have my pop-up shop coming and then I also have my paint and sip that's coming as well in June. Um, and trying to curate events on top of also trying to figure out, okay, but I want to focus on pushing my, my business, but then also I want to consult and mentor people because I have people coming to me for a web development work as well. Cause that's like another part of the business that I actually didn't mention. I also yeah. build websites. So my website, oh, okay. I built myself um, along with, I have a few other clients that I've built their websites for. So it's like really trying to figure out okay, pick one and try to like refine it, focus it before you start trying to expand. Um, I think just the overthinker being in overdrive and wanting to do everything at once. It's just like, I want to have my hands in all these pots. But... Yeah, but you know what? There's <laughs> nothing wrong with that because black girls can do everything as say my logo. Yes. <laughs> People are going to be crazy. They was like, oh my gosh, you're, you're an executive here, executive there, and you have this business and a nonprofit. Yes, and I'm also a consultant and a published author all at the same damn time so you can do it it's just about refocusing your time and your energy to make every moment of your life effective and what that looks like and that that's the hard part how can i be all i want to be in one moment and what does that look like for everybody so you know i wouldn't say 
<laughs> don't try to do everything because I am big on that we can do it all at once. We just got to figure out the best methods and processes mm -hmm. of doing it. So when you talk about your curating events and doing all this other stuff, are you a team of just you or do you have any partners? Um, right now, I do partner with my... I want to say, I, I pause because we found out we may be like cousins in some way and related, like <laughs> after the fact, like such a small world. So I'm like, huh, yeah. what am I calling my business partner? Um, but it's another um, vendor that I met at another pop-up shop, okay. um, My Solitude. I really loved his brand. Um, he does a lot of um, apparel, but okay. more so for athletes and um, they're like track suits and things of that nature. Okay. He runs track himself. So we've partnered to actually throw our first pop-up together. It was the year of the enterprises pop-up. Mm -hmm. um, we did a Valentine's Day one. And then we have another one coming May 22nd as well. I think it's the yeah. same day as yours. I found out today. No, mine is the 21st. I'm Saturday. Oh, the 21st. Okay. There we go. Yeah. We wanted a Saturday too. That's the crazy part. But we, we ended up on Sunday. But I like the 2-2. Two, two. Mm -hmm. the the five two twenty two that made me happy <laughs> okay I'll give you that I'll give you that um, um but we, yeah we've been working together to kind of um curate these events because I think I realized that sometimes I can't be a one woman show all the time even though I know I can but mm -hmm. I can't um because it it will definitely put a lot of that pressure and that stress that forced me to really say okay you know what you need mm -hmm. to stop you need to take care of you you need to mm -hmm. love you nurture you and then you could come back to really bring your bring together and do all of this no I, I completely understand but collaboration is everything and I think that's what the key part of black or everything is is the fact that it's all about the collective and how we engage and work and support each other throughout that process so a lot of vendors whom I work with um they all work with each other they all support each other's events, support each other's products, support each other's dreams as a way to make sure everybody gets to the top. And that's why we call it the collective, because we're collectively trying to move our businesses up together. So like, when that's why the purpose of me hosting events and doing retreats and doing videos and stuff like this is to provide opportunities for people to know who's out there and what's available. Now I know that you're a web designer. I didn't know that about you but there's people who need website design. So the, now you come part of my entourage. Okay, so if my other person is not available for web design, I also can refer them your way or refer them to both of you and let them pick who they'd rather work with, you know? So that's about the part about working with BGE is a, that you can find access to people who can help elevate you. Like even for me, like I don't curate any map. I, my brain curates my events, but the actual <laughs> base of my events is taken care of by Affinity Blue Events, which is my wife mm -hmm. and my sister-in-law. That's what they do. They're event manage managers, right? Because there's a clear difference between event management and event planning. Yes. So they manage my events and all the stuff that I do, which is great. You know, and now I'm at the point with my business, I actually can pay them for it. So I'm, it's even more exciting. But yeah. I find that we can do it all, but we do need support. So you don't exhaust yeah. yourself because otherwise you will strain yourself to death, which is now why Sheena, you know, Sheena is actually my publicist yes. because all those things I was like, yo, I can't do this. I'm not going to grow. I'm not going to succeed unless I have someone as a team. And she provided that for me. So I think mm -hmm. with you, which we're, which we're hearing and if anybody's listening or, you know, is going to watch this later, it's just look at your team because everybody needs a team. You can't just be a team of me. You know, yeah. the Dr. Glow brand does not grow and has not grown because I'm just that great. It's grown because I work <laughs> collaboratively with a lot of amazing people. So that helps with that exhaustion and that brain stress. Yeah, I definitely can use <laughs> I definitely can use that. I think I realized that um, those around me that I felt probably were a team I had to make some shifts um and I think that that is what the biggest thing was was trying to also realize that um trying to word this and not be too <laughs> not if be you too don't go forward, straight but... forward be straightforward I mean, people people are just not they're not in, they're really not there in your corner the way that um 
Yeah. They say that they are. So the mm -hmm. support that some people think that they're giving is not truly actually support in the way of yeah. which that they think they're supporting you. They're not, and they're not really helping. And there's a lot of people secretly, I think, um, really trying to bring you down as well. Um, I, I would hope that wasn't the case with some of the people that have been around me, but I think I realized that I needed to refocus and start to network more. That's been like one of my goals this year. Mm -hmm. And I think when I've met Sheena, I told her that like, I want to network. I need to meet new people. I need to get out more, which I still think I need to get out even more. Um, mm -hmm. The resistance of, I, I know that sometimes I can go into a siloed, um, but I think it's because professionally, the type of work that I do, I really do work by myself too, a lot. So I see that spilling over into my business. And I'm like, mm -hmm. I know, like they say, it takes a village to raise like a family. It takes a village to raise anything. And the things, same thing, it takes a village to raise that business and bring that yeah. business up, like you said. Yeah, no, definitely, definitely. And you can't exist on your own island. Because if you yeah. want to have million dollar sales, you need to know a million people. And a million people need to know you if you're going to get to those, those, those heights. So it's about how do you move about getting yourself to that space and what that looks like. And being present in the moment and, and just getting out and going to things and building relationships and collaborations and stuff like that. That's the main reason why I do these videos. You're like video 100 and something at this point. <laughs> like literally, I think I'm at like one, I think you're like 110 or something around that area. Oh, wow. That's a yeah, lot. That I've done so far. Yeah. And since 2020, so in 2022, I've recorded over 100 videos with people. But I can recall every single video because I've connected with every single person. And it's great to be able to say, well, somebody's, well, I need this. Oh, oh, go to season three, episode two. And they're going to have what you want. Go to my YouTube mm -hmm. channel, you find it and stuff like that. Because I've had such a variety of people, but it's all about that. You know, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a, a cancer. So first of all, I'm a crab. I like being in my shell. I like hiding all the time. But if I'm going to make this flourish, I got to be out there. I got to show up and be present. You know, that's the part that I think I find a little hard um, for myself because I find myself being very shy, a little introverted. I think you may remember at the fashion show, they were like, oh, do you want to talk, get on the bike and talk about you? This is like, mm, I'm too shy. And, <laughs> and it's like, in that moment, I realized that I, I need to be able to open myself up more to that. And it, it's weird because people will be like, but you DJ, like you used to DJ. How are you mm -hmm. shy? And I'm like, if you look at it, I never talked on the mic when I DJed yeah so um I think that coming out of my shell and, and coming into the the woman that I am now mm -hmm. um has been a journey as well okay no I, I think that's interesting the way you look at it so you used to be a DJ huh I mean I, I still technically am not used to but I don't focus on DJing anymore um as much the last thing that I did DJ wise in my DJ career I DJ the last Labor Day parade that we had um for Sesame Flyers it was very lit it was amazing um and then the pandemic happened <laughs> um and I kind of just went into a little bit of a siloed um and then started my business actually and went and placed the focus on the business instead okay okay <laughs> all right I'm, I'm just going to absorb all this information about you and then pull at your strings about things that I'm just going to make you do out. That's what's just going to happen. Okay. I'm going to set you up. You're going to come by, come by an event. I'm like, oh, she's getting on right now. I'm like, well, that's what's going to happen. Because I, I love seeing- It would be lit stuff. though. It would be lit. I, yeah, so I'll stop playing that. around. <laughs> it's funny because someone actually um, was like, oh, can you make a mix? I was like, but you know how. They were like, no, but I want you to make it. I'm yeah. like, well, I don't have a lot of the new music because they wanted me to make a soca mix. They're like, oh, okay, no problem. Check your email. I was like, oh man, I don't got no more excuses. <laughs> 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 I now have been tasked with um, making a new soca mix. So that is going to come soon. But um, that is another outlook outlet for me of expression of emotion and um playing music and uh -huh. I'm better than a lot of male DJs out here I'll just put that out there 
Um, I think for me, it was just also the politics of it. And I say that all the time. It's just yeah. being a female DJ was extremely hard when you don't have the right people in your corner for the right reasons. And a lot of people who do end up making it and doing going far female wise, sadly, their names are spoken about and you hear negative things about them. And I okay. never wanted to be that person or be that type of person in that space because okay. that um, that carnival scene and that soca scene, while I love it, it's amazing. It can be very toxic. Hmm. So and is I, that, I that your niche toxic. within it? Like that whole Caribbean based music? That's your thing? It is. Yeah. Oh, so you is. so you go for for a good bashment. Of course, bashment, fet, anything along the sorts. Yes, and that's okay. my thing. Especially the old school. Love old school soca. Love old school dancehall. Old school reggae. Like those are like my my creativity juices just be flowing with that. Okay. Okay. So you can get down <laughs> with my friend Natalia. When we was at Christmas music, and she was playing. It was at Christmas, and she started playing old school, old school music. And I was sitting here, it's like, because we did our Christmas in January because you know everybody had COVID. Mm -hmm. So it was like January twenty second. I'm just like, I'm dying. It's like Friday night. I, what are you doing to me with this right now? What are you doing? This is not <laughs> the yard in 1965. Like I'm, I'm done, literally. <laughs> but yeah. So she would love you. <laughs> oh, well, that, when I say old school, I don't mean that that old, but you know, as old as me, I could possibly old. get. <laughs> it is, but you know, a lot of the music was a lot more authentic then, and it has changed Sweet. dramatically. Like I yeah. personally, even the new Soka, I it takes me a long time to get into the groove of it, really get into it. Um, okay. And same thing with the new dance hall. I don't to like the feel of it or okay. like how it sounds or what they're necessarily um, singing about <laughs> or uh -huh. talking about in the lyrics. So it, it's harder to connect. So I default to the older music because it's classical and everybody will always vibe to it. OK, so like who are some of your favorite artists? Uh, I have so many. Um, I think if we're going from a reggae standpoint, Barris, Uncle Barris, Buju, um, oh, yeah. Glenn Washington, Sanchez, mm -hmm. um, going into Soka, you got Marshall. I love Voice the Artist. He's amazing now. Um, Blacks, Blacks actually just passed away recently due to complication with COVID. He was iconic in the Soka scene. Um, Vibes Cartel is always going to be like my number mm -hmm. one, <laughs> my heart. <laughs> I love him. Um, it's amazing how he can still make music from jail. Like, yeah, it's just, there's just so many that mm -hmm. I, I love music. I grew up with it um, in okay. my family. So, yeah, I love music too. Half those people I didn't know who you're talking about, but it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's all right. <laughs> I'm gonna replay this video. I'm like, okay, let me write these names down. Now I gotta figure out who happened because I have no clue. Who's and when you hear the music, you'll be like, oh, I know this song. I might, you might know a couple Probably. of songs. Probably. Listen, I don't know half the people uh, names I went to high school with, let alone artists. I'm, I'm that person. That's Play fair. music. Like, oh, I know that song, but I have no clue the artist name is. That's just was always my thing. I am really yes. honed in on learning names these days. Okay. Because okay. people's names are important. Yes, <laughs> they definitely are. They definitely are. So, so now we have we have sit here and we have recasted your music career during this interview. <laughs> On top of recasting the fact that you do website design and you're going to be doing consulting services for mm -hmm. people, website design as well as music mixtures that they can utilize on their websites that you design. On top okay. of your collection of all your products that you have that has great music that you have mixed into your actual YouTube channel that's going to align music with your home decor. How do you feel about all of that? <laughs> that sounds great. I know. That's what I do in five minutes. <laughs> this is why I people like hire the way, me. I mean, the, way you, the, the, the way you just put that together, like, hmm, I didn't even think about curating the music with the art. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. I do have a SoundCloud with quite a few mixes um, as well. I'll share it with you. <laughs> it's like share it with everybody now. What is it called? Um, my SoundCloud. You have to search for DJ Queen Lexi. So oh, okay. Queen so Lexi so your is name, actually so your a name persona. goes across all brands. Exactly. 
Mm -hmm. My name is my, that persona that was created. Okay, Queen Lexi. Sitting here playing around for all this talent, (laughs) sitting on it. Yeah, but yeah, I'm able to do that all the time. Every time I get to it to, like I speak to somebody for at least 10 minutes, then I get all the information about their business and I can spit out your growth process just like that. That's a creative in me, 100%. 100%. And then I usually am able to curate at least 15 events, pass off what people say, which pisses my event management team company off all the time. Because after my interviews, I'm like, we're going to do this. And I'm like, God damn it. <laughs> what is she talking about now? Listen, okay, I was inspired. So now is what we're going to do. <laughs> I definitely know that way. So, how can people find you to book you for all their great soca parties this summer because everybody's outside? Oh, yeah, we outside. Um, they can find me via Instagram at Queen. Um, see, I always struggle with this because sometimes I don't know when to use my personal versus my my business page. So I use both, okay. um, especially more so when I'm reaching out to others too. So my personal Queen Lexi, it's Q U E three N L E X I I, um, and then Queen Lexi and spelt out with the two eyes dot toc and those are on instagram and then also um via email as well at ql consults inc at mm-hmm. gmail.com okay dope amazing you're not on facebook i am on facebook um personally more so not business used, yeah yeah okay. per, it's been more the business one is there however it's connected to my instagram Mm -hmm. Um, so everything that gets posted on Instagram gets posted directly to the Facebook. So you can Mm -hmm. search for, um, Queen Lexi's home collection and more. Okay. And they'll be able to find, um, more information there as well. Okay. What about your TikTok? It is the same as my Instagram. That's Q-U-E-3-N-L-E-X-I-I. Um, you'll find quite a few of those videos. You might find a couple of videos of my dog. We, I kind of share my page with him oh wonderful is it travel of you and your dog what's your dog's name teddy hi teddy my, my i'm gonna check teddy out on tiktok i don't really know I, I go on tiktok because mm-hmm. i have to not because i want to be there um because i'm still I trying to, to get into it I, yeah. i'm trying to understand it you know between facebook and instagram those is my things like i'm there every day yeah. all day i can exist there tiktok is kind of like yo you got to remind myself i got to put an alarm on my phone go post some tiktok cuz it's not like i don't have the content mm. i just don't go on it um mm. but yeah i'm going to fix that cuz i said that out loud so i got to fix that right i think i'll make a mental note to do that as well I- i'm trying to also become a little bit more personal personable and show a little bit more about um myself and what I do because I, I shy away from the camera a lot I actually yeah. do not take a lot of pictures I don't post videos I don't go live um and it's just that shyness of kind of like putting yourself out there and things like that but I'll if someone asks hey do you want to do an interview yeah sign me up I want to do it <laughs> <laughs> like, and I'll get all yeah. excited and happy to do that but then I'm like why can I do it by myself just on yeah. my own yeah. So, you know, you really just want to kind of think about where that's coming from and what's causing you to have that, um, that lack of interest to want to get that done and what that looks like and why, right? What is drawing you not to want to, to have that act or people have that access to you? For what reason? Uh, I don't know. I, 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 think, I, I, wanna, I wanna say I've always been like a behind the closed doors kind of person. Like I like to yeah. be the person behind the scenes. Uh-huh. Um, but I realized in having a business, you can't be behind the scenes because nobody's gonna know about your business. Yeah, so, how do you wanna learn about who you are? <laughs> I, that, that's why I'm, I'm, I'm trying, I'm slowly trying. I, I, I gotta try some more, try a little harder. I think yeah. also I realized that um, my pr- I fear my um, professional life getting in the way um, because of my job. Mm -hmm. And I, I think I sometimes get scared of what perceptions people may then have, or may see if like, you see me post a certain thing, like I don't even party Mm -hmm. and go out as much anymore. So I become more conscious about what I'm posting to the point that I get scared to even post like myself at all, if it's not business Mm -hmm. related. Understood. Understood. 
I get that because we're all mm-hmm. scared of judgment. Yeah, and, and yeah. then I, I work for um corporate company, <laughs> Lawrence Corporate Company now for the mm-hmm. past year, going on a year now, I work for Morgan Stanley. So it's oh, you're been... not posting anything. Now you see why. Because <laughs> you can't, you can't. You no, really and I get can't. you, and I get you. So, you know, my content exists of me going for a walk, my jobs, construction on my yard, everything else. Friday night turn up is private yeah. because it has to be because social media is out there and we all know yeah. we can see what people post on social media can be come out to be access, accessible to real life real quickly. So it's really important that we watch what we're putting out and what people see and what people are exposed to because we yeah. can get ourselves caught up out there. So I, I respect it. I totally get it. You know, just, you know, continue to post about Teddy. People are going to love Teddy. <laughs> they do. He's a whole mood. He was so sad yesterday. He has his own Instagram as well. It's Teddy McTedster. <laughs> Teddy dot McTedster. Yeah, there we go. Teddy dot McTedster. Oh, he has a enough. whole Instagram. He's mm-hmm. a whole mood. Gorgeous little pup. <laughs> I'm so excited that you have yeah. such a loving relationship with your pup. I, I do. He, he's mommy's little baby. Like he legit got so mad at me last night um, as he saw me packing to leave. And he's like, you just left me. And I packed his little bag of his toys to take to the dog sitter. And he kindly unpacked his bag and took everything out and then stuck his tongue out at me. It's all documented on his page. <laughs> so he's a whole personality mood. He's very smart super intelligent um Mm -hmm. bought him level three puzzles he figured it out to the now he gets them down in three minutes and eats all the treats in like three minutes so we we that's legit my child (laughs) yeah i'm trying to get my puppy to stop running outside oh and not come back well she comes back eventually but she's a border collie so she's incredibly intelligent very bright communicate You know, I understand her bark when she talks to me, but mm-hmm. she's so social that she wants to go outside uh, and she wants to go to all the houses with there's other dogs. And she stands in front of their house, come, out, come outside and play with me. But then those dogs are really big and they might eat her. So we can't allow that to happen. Yeah, I I have a little bit of that problem. He doesn't run outside, luckily, but he is a social butterfly. So anyone could possibly take him and he'll be like, okay. Yeah, yeah she's like, <laughs> yep. I'm like, yo, Coco, dude, you, yep. they will walk off with you because she's a beautiful dog. So you'll just be gone. Yep. Yeah. Thank you, dogs, <laughs> with their own social life. <laughs> but definitely. But this has been wonderful, darling, talking to you this evening, even with my delay. Yes, and stuff it like has. That. So again, so I, tell I got some creative juices. <laughs> yeah. They're flowing, they're flowing. Share. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to get, get you up and moving and motivated. So I, I want you to really confirm if you're coming to the retreat or not. I'm very excited about that. Yes, I need to. I'm going to connect with you offline about that so I can get more of the information. Um, I, I literally just found out. I've had quite a few shifts in life going on in the past couple of months. So, um, yeah. But again, everyone can find me on Instagram and TikTok. Same name at Q-U-E-3-N-L-E-X-I-I. Mm-hmm. I'm also at Queen Lexi, and that's Q-U-E-E-N-L-E-X-I-I dot T-O-C. Mm-hmm. Um, and then on Facebook, Queen Lexi's Home Collection and more. And also my website, of course, um, www.queenlexi.com. Amazing. <laughs> Amazing. And I'm just so excited to see all the new pages about all the new things you're going to have on there, your music and all that other stuff you're going to be doing. You know, it's funny. I took the music off of it. The music was initially on the website and um, it had links directly to my um, SoundCloud and I actually took it off. So yeah, I, I think it. that means we're going to put it back on. Yeah, immediately. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Be the whole brand that you are. Don't limit that. All right. Until we speak again. Good night. Yes. Good night. Bye, everyone. <laughs>